Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled the T-junction power divider. In this lecture we will look at two types of T-junction power dividers, the lossless divider and the resistive divider. The T-junction power divider is a simple three-port network that can be used for power division or power combining and it can be implemented in virtually any type of transmission line. There are many types of T-junction power dividers. For example, the E-plane waveguide T, the H-plane waveguide T, and a microstrip line T-junction divider. All of these lossless T-junction dividers can be modeled as a junction of three transmission lines as shown in this picture. There may be fringing fields and higher order modes associated with the discontinuity at the junction, which can lead to stored energy that can be accounted for by a lumped susceptance B, as shown here. In order for the divider to be matched to the input line with characteristic impedance Z0, we must have that the input admittance equals the susceptance associated to fringing fields and higher order modes plus 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 equal to 1 over Z0. If the transmission lines are lossless, then the characteristic impedances are real. Therefore, B equals 0 and we have that 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 equals 1 over Z0. Let's look at an example of a lossless divider. A lossless T-junction power divider has a source impedance of 50 ohms. Find the output characteristic impedances so that the output powers are at a 2 to 1 ratio. Compute the reflection coefficients seen looking into the ports. The voltage at the junction is V0. Therefore, the input power to the matched divider is given by this expression, V0 squared over 2z0. Therefore, the output powers p1 out equals v0 squared over 2z1, which is equal to one third of p in for the 2 to 1 ratio, and for p2 out, we have v0 squared over 2z2, which is equal to two thirds of p in. Now, the resistances will be 150 ohms for z1 and 75 ohms for Z2. Now to calculate the reflection coefficients, we find the input impedance, which is the parallel combination of the 75 and 150 ohm resistors, which is equal to 50 ohms. Looking into the Z1 output line, the impedance is 75 ohms in parallel with 50 ohms which gives us 30 ohms. Looking into the C2 output line, the impedance is a parallel combination of the 50 ohm and 150 ohms, which is equal to 37.5. Now the reflection coefficients looking into the ports are for port 1 equals 30 minus 150 over 30 plus 150, which is equal to this. And for the port 2, it's equal to 37.5 minus 75 over 37.5 plus 75, and it's equal to this. If a three-port divider contains lossy components, it can be made to be matched at all ports. The circuit for such a divider is shown in this picture, which is an equal split three-port resistive power divider which is achieved using three lumped element resistors, one at each port, and each having a value of Z0 over 3. This divider can be analyzed using simple circuit theory. We assume that all ports are terminated with transmission lines with characteristic impedance Z0. Then Z is impedance looking into ports 2 and 3 which is the series combination of Z0 and Z0 over 3. So Z equals 4 thirds of Z0. 
The input impedance looking into port 1 is the series combination of C0 over 3 and the parallel combination of C, which is given by this expression, and it's equal to C0. This means that the input is matched to the feed line. Now we can define the voltage at port 1 to be V1. Then by voltage division, the voltage V, which is the voltage at the center of the junction, is given by this expression and it's equal to two-thirds of V1. The output voltages are the same, V2 equals V3 because the ports are symmetric. And also by simple voltage division, we obtain that V2 and V3 are equal to one half of V1. As I said before, the network is symmetric from all three ports. Therefore, the output ports are also matched. This means that S11, S22, and S33 equals zero. Since the voltage at port two and port three is equal to one half of V1, S21, S31, and S23 equals one half. Therefore, the scattering matrix for this divider can be written as this. Now, the power delivered to the input of the divider is given by this expression. Pn equals one half of V1 squared over Z0. And the output powers P2 and P3 are the same and they're equal to one half of one half V1 squared over Z0, which is equal to one fourth of the power delivered.